Hi there everybody and welcome to my beginner's guide for Timberborn. I'm Icon and in this video I'm going to explain you how to build up a successful little beaver colony. I'm going to explain the, the general gameplay loop and the challenges of this game. And this also features as kind of a review over this early access version because while I'm recording this, this is a very, very polished early access but still the game has a lot of development ahead of it but that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong about it so far. So let's get started. Up here we have our little village center. The camera controls are the same as you're used to, you know. In case you are, uh, you are bothered uh, the, as much as I was when I started out, you have to enable the camera, the edge scrolling, because it's not a default setting. It really bothered me a ton and uh, just wanted to point that out directly. Apart from that, right mouse button uh, paints and uh, rotates the camera, nothing big here. Up here we see what our colony has available. There's water, logs, and food. There's also materials, but materials are not that important yet. They will go grow later. And there's also science points, but we're gonna talk about science, not yet. This is a thing for the future. The most important resources at the beginning are water, food, and wood. Because wood you need for building and water and food, well, we don't need to explain that, I guess. Every one of these little beavers here has a long list of needs which you need to satisfy ultimately. But to begin with, you just need to worry about hunger, thirst, and sleep. These three are mandatory to be satisfied, otherwise they will go dead. So. To make sure that we have all this, let's start with wood, uh, with the wood collection. To produce wood, you need to do two things. First off, you get over to the wood section there, and you click there. And in this game, this is a little bit uh, overwhelming at first, at least it was for me. Everything marked with these red dots here has to be yet unlocked by science. So you can't ignore everything with these little red knobs at the beginning and you can only check out these things. So we're going to put down lumberjack flags. This is basically your workspace for your lumberjack. And when you place them down, you see here there's this uh, shiny outlining and it depicts how far the working radius of your lumberjacks would be. So make sure that these are in close vicinity or in rough vicinity to all of these forests. I'm going to place down three of those because I know that at the beginning of a game, I always have a, a high hunger for timber. So we're going to let a path flow past these. And now in this game, everything needs to be ultimately connected with roads. And as you see here, the road must always pass the door of a building. So now they are truly connected. And let's see what will happen. These thingies here have a build progress. And now our little dudes run over there and start building those. But as you see here, there's nothing to be harvested, nothing to do in range. The game gives you immediately a readout if any of these things are in in any trouble. So now we get over to this menu, cut trees, and just mark a tree cutting area. This depicts where your lumberjacks are allowed to work. For now, I'm going to allow them to cut down everything. Keep in mind that these trees ultimately do regrow in a slowish amount of time in these regions where they actually do grow. So don't you worry, you will not run out of materials that quickly. So after that's been done, put up a nice little log pile next to that to make sure that the collected timber can be stored. All right, after that's been done, let's take the food income as the next problem. As you see here, there's a lot of blueberries lying around. So that's going to work just like it worked here with the with the wood. We select the food rider, we go for a gatherer flag this time because this is what we're doing this uh, with this job. And make sure that the shiny area is above all the berries and then you just smack down the pathing and that's that. Boom. Nothing more to worry about. So what we do have to worry about, though, is our water income. So let's fix that immediately. I also think that this is way more important than the food income because we got berries in storage. So water. 
who found it over here. And water is extracted by water pumps and stored in uh, water tanks. So water pumps work like that. They need to be connected to water. You see the arrow thingy is where the path goes and the backside, which is slightly bluely underlined here, has to be put into water. You see that there's a maximum depth that the water pump can work with and that uh, does uh, give you an indi uh, indicator about how deep that uh, pipe can ultimately reach down into the water. As you see here, it would reach down to this one, but here it's also no problem. Okay, with that said and done, let's place down one water pump here. And this is going to be the first building we've placed, which actually also needs materials. As you see here, 12 logs are necessary. So let's connect that yet again with a path. You've seen that there's this pathing there. And let's do this here. And also let's put up a warehouse for all the stored, for all the collected berries. So because I feel like the water production is the most important thing, I want to explain the construction priority menu here real quick. As you can see here, there are arrows. We're telling our beavers now that this is the most important construction, more important than the warehouse. You can also put up real chains of construction priority, and I'm really, really happy that the developers have put up med things like these, because they are really, really useful. There's nothing more bothersome than not being capable of putting up construction priorities. All right, so now we see we have our water pump, but just like with the other uh, materials, we need a storage. Weirdly enough, the water storage thingies can only be found in the water menu and not in the storage menu. Just uh, ride with it. And yeah, let's put that over here. I'll try to avoid spamming anything along the coastline because as you see here, that water pump can only be built onto the coastline and surprise news, one water pump won't be enough ever. All right. Let's talk about workforce though. Over here are these menus which show you what's going on in your settlement. We see here how many beavers we have in town. Children doesn't have no workforce yet. Adults do work. We also have a severe case of homelessness. We're going to settle that after these buildings have been finished. Down here though we see the workers. So seven of seven people are employed so we don't have any workspaces left. We have the district center the people at the district center work as transporters between things and I really haven't understood fully yet what the people at the district center actually work, but the other people are more understandable. So the gatherer flag provides people gathering, lumberjack flag and water pump. Keep in mind that the water pump needs to have a beaver inside to actually extract water. Every of these uh, gathering um buildings has a intern storage but as soon as that's full they can't produce anymore that's why these storage buildings are so important all right so the water pump's done the tank's getting done too the locks are just uh, missing right now all right so the next thing we got to do now is to make sure that our dear friends here are not homeless anymore. So let's get over to the housing menu. At the housing menu, we can build lodges. Of course, there are different houses available later down the road, but now we don't have any research yet. So with the housing, we are going to go all the way back here. That's because I really want to use the, the rocky soil here for living purposes, because there's a really, really, uh, important thing to know you can only plant stuff successfully in a way that it grows on this green vibrant soil this green vibrant soil by the way is directly uh, connected to the water so if there's no more water here the fertile soil here will disappear too but more about that later so now we have finished these things and now there's a larger project up ahead we're building these lodges and we're also building that water tank. So I'm going to increase the construction priority of the water tank and I'm going to fast forward this video a bit until until these lodges are done because right now there's nothing more than waiting involved.
Now then, the last building is just being finished. We have now houses for our little beavers here. And while that doesn't seem too much, a very important thing has to be noted. Now that they have a house, they also gain comfort. Let's talk about these things a little bit. As you see here, a house satisfies sleep and comfort. The more of these uh, things we satisfy, the more well-being our beavers generate. And as you see here, with every single of these needs fulfilled, we get another buff. So social life increases fertility, fun increases working speed, the three tiers of nutrition increase all manner of different things. So TLDR, the more different uh, benefits your beavers have, the more buff they get. So that's why it's pretty important to provide well-being to everybody. And also, check out these little trees here. They automatically grow here, like I said. Seedlings go off on their own. Pretty good stuff. Alright, now we got all the basics down. We got a berry gatherer, we got a water gatherer, and we got some living area, and we got wood. But this won't bring us far. As you can see here, those berries have been already pretty plucked, and... Fruit growth is at zero person, so there's that's going to take way too long. So let's talk about food generation next. So we are not only gatherers, we are also farmers. To start farming, we are going to build up a farmhouse. So up down here, by the way, if you haven't already noticed it, are the costs for all the buildings. So a farmhouse only provides the workspace for the farmers. You still need to put up the crops to plant via this menu. So far, there are three, three different crops that have been implemented in the game. Carrots, potatoes and wheat. Carrots grow in four days and yield three pieces of, uh, of food per, per patch, so therefore they are really good for accumulating lots of nutrition real quick. The potato needs six days to grow and yields only one potato. Its main use is to be fired on is to be put onto the grill where it transforms from one potato into four potatoes and satisfies nutrition tier two. But Seriously, start out with potato uh, with potatoes once you are properly supplied with carrots because carrots grow much faster and due to the uh, challenge mechanic which I will explain in a couple of minutes aka droughts, it is really good to have large supplies very quickly. In general, this is something about this game you should always try to hoard resources, especially those which you need to live. Because every couple of unknown days, the game will toss a drought at you. The drought will let the rivers run dry, and all the fertile soil will grow like this. The whole map will look like that then. And you can't grow anything on the fields anymore. You can't collect any water anymore. And if your stockpiles aren't high enough at this point, well, your population will start dying. Therefore, I can't recommend it enough. Build large water t supplies. Build large amounts of food. Because you will ultimately need it for survival. Okay, another thing we'll need for survival too is science. Science is pretty simple in this game. You just put down an inventor's hut, which only costs you me your 12 logs, and then you create a workspace for the inventor job. Like I did with the other things before, I try to value my green uh, soil as much as possible. Alright, so with these things all settled down, there's only one thing that I want to explain in this tutorial, building-wise, and then we're going to talk about some other mechanics, uh, mechanic, uh, mechanical things, and that's power. Power generation is a thing in this game. You can generate power either via water wheels, power wheels, or windmills. So the power wheel is quite simple. It's a beaver-operated wheel where you put in a beaver and he produces power. I'm not going to uh, put this concept up, I'm going to explain the water wheel, because when you know how to install a water wheel, you can also handle the power wheel, but not necessarily the other way around. So the water wheel must be immersed in water. If you want to see the water a little bit more better, just click up here and you can, make, you can discern it better. So we're going to put down the water wheel here. 
And as you see, there's these blue connectors. These blue connectors depict where we can build our power cables, basically. So we're going to put it like that. And as we see here, this is still on the green soil. And that's just what we want to have. Power is so far at this stage of the game where we're at, only needed for one building, and that's the lumber mill. The lumber mill transforms blocks into planks. And planks are necessary for all manner of different uh, advanced buildings, but the most prominent and important one, in my opinion, is the forester. The forester enables you to plant trees, which is massive, but also bushes, which are these little buggers. So with a forester, you can massively upgrade the efficiency of the gatherer. Therefore, you need planks, because no planks, no forest. So the lumber mill here, we'll put it over here, and the lumber mill will process, like I said, where, wait a sec, can we put it down here? Nah, I don't want to be that close to the water. Let's do it here. Like I said, the lumber mill will process uh, these uh, logs into planks, but it also needs a terrible amount of logs by itself, and in general, my personal recommendation at this point is don't rush the plank production too hard. It's way more important to rush towards an overproduction of food early on than towards the planks. The planks can wait. It's way better to make sure that you have enough workforce to survive the first drought before you go down that road. But for the sake of tutorial, I want to explain electricity. So I'll fast forward the construction of these things yet again. And there we are. Our water wheel is turning and the lumber mill is out of power. It can't work without power. So how do we get power there? Over in the power menu, you see all manner of different power shafts. So here we see, if you hover next to that, the power can be connected to any side of the building. It, it really doesn't matter. We, we can't put it down here because there's fields, but the back side would work too. I haven't uh, put, tried the yeah, the front side would work too. So the game really doesn't uh, put you any uh, doesn't put you in any trouble there. So we're going to put these here, and as you see, if you rotate it the wrong way, it gets uh, orange, and you get a little bit of a uh, warning down there too. So pretty good stuff if you just uh, to have no clue what you're doing. So we're putting this here, and to go around corners, we need a power shaft turn. And as you see here, there are also intersections, T intersections, all manner of different things to get the power rolling. So we can do a lot of different things. For now, we go for that power shaft turn and put it down here. And let's see what happens in a second once these are done. And so this is how how modern timber tack looks like. Sadly, our beavers are going to sleep. <clears throat> well, during the nighttime, let's talk about these other things. So, whenever we have a capacity for, for these storage things, we can always des um, define how much of these things are desired. And for warehouses you can also store planks since planks are being constructed directly out of your box keep in mind you might want you might want to have that production at a certain uh, level which you personally decide you can also put in uh, single numbers if you want to because you know sometimes you don't want to process all your blocks to planks Sometimes you do. This, this this works with all the different things. You can also rule out something, and it's pretty simple once you got the hang of it. So, you lazy beavers, why aren't you completing that work? Can't get all the required materials. In general, by the way, work time... Well, I, I somehow got the feeling as if my... Uh, production jobs are not getting satisfied and I block them out somehow. So whenever that happens, you can just demolish things. I have a, high, I have a uh, hunch what happened there. And uh, well, demolishing things though, keep in mind that you're not receiving your resources back, which is something I hope that will be fixed eventually because I certainly don't 
like that too much. So here we go. Let's put that uh, intersection over there because I have the slight feeling as if my little friends were not able to reach that point because there was no way around. I got no clue, but we're going to find out for sure because material wise, that whole thing wouldn't shouldn't have uh, been an issue at all. And here we go. Now that's how it should look like. Here we go. When these uh, power shafts are connected with power, they turn. This is a very uh, simple way of uh, seeing if you're doing it wrong or right. And now this place is finally working out. Okay, so now we're producing planks out of logs. Planks are needed for all manner of different things. But like I mentioned before, you need them first for the forester. The forester will just work like the farmhouse. You put down the, the trees out of this menu. You can only do this uh, once you have built the forester. And now we are at the point where I want to talk about multi-story buildings as well. So Timberborn allows you to put, for example, houses on top of each other. Basically every building which has the trait solid can hold other things on top. So this looks all nice and neat, nice and neat, but there's one thing you really need to keep in mind. If I would just keep put a house on top of this like that, it would be inaccessible because the door needs to be connected to a path, period. That's a golden rule of this game, which is always, uh, which always needs to be satisfied. So for example, though, we could place down this one here and then just build a little bit of a staircase there, but we haven't, uh, we don't have the necessary research points. To research something, you see all these little, these things with a little red knob, they have a number below them, and that's the amount of science they cost. And yeah, you get the idea, we would need to build a staircase to get over there, and there's one more thing. Out there in the map, there are ruins, because in this world, there were once humans, and, well, this is a post-apocalyptic simulator, in case you didn't know it yet. So, TLDR, the later stages of the game are about collecting metal out of these areas and building new districts. So, every district center, and you can build more of these district centers, is connecting a to a certain area as you see here this district center has only this area of influence everything beyond that you can build and the big challenge in this game is to build up your first district in a way that it works out survives droughts and whatnot and then you will start to expand into other districts you will have to build up districts districts that are supporting districts in the badlands where they bring food to the other uh, settlements and all these wonderful things. And that's something I really enjoy. Also, there's a complete rider for leisure-based things, so you can build a campfire place to make people more happy. You see, with all these things here, satisfies social life. This is, for example, this, uh, this well-being rider. And this uh, here, the temple satisfies spirituality, and so on and so forth. Decorational items are either completely decorational, like the bench here, or satisfy some other things as depicted in the tooltip. Just stick to these things. Late game goals in the early access version as we have it right now are three monuments which inspire all. And beyond that, well, there's metal uh, production by scavenging and shredding. And, well, the other thing I need to talk about is water management. In this game, it's really all about you building accordingly to move that water through the land. You see, you can either support a, a sector in the Badlands, or you go terraforming and land shaping, and you try to move the water somewhere with creative use of dams and such. That's the truly mid and late game for that. You can also you know, develop dynamite later on. So there's lots of different cool things that you can go for. All right, so if that's something you like, ah, here, paper. <laughs> paper is needed for explosives, and once you have explosives, you can go for, for all manner of different things. So if that's something you like, you're all, all upset for uh, you're all set for a Timberborn. I really like this game for its 
surprising complexity because honestly juggling your low amount of workers in a way that you will survive the next drought and not getting too greedy because you want to advance to that juicy juicy next tech is truly more challenging than it looks like but the first things you need to master are food production, water production, and somehow sustain that with a forester and a farmhouse, and then you're good to go. That's easier, that's harder than it sounds like. And then you can dive into the Badlands and conquer this wonderful world. Timberborn is at this point a early access title which promises a lot, and it deserves all the, all the praise it got so far. I can't wait to see where the devs will bring this game next, because I personally think that there's a good future for this game. You have a pretty high amount of complexity in these uh, buildings and the different height uh, and the different height levels and all these things. So, go forth, hoard food and water, and conquer this world in Timber Timberborn. Can't recommend it more, and can't wait what the devs have uh, up in store for me. So far, one of the most promising colony builder simulators that I've seen in this year. So. What do you guys think? Drop me your comments down below. I'd really love to hear your opinions. And of course, leave me a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed my work. And in general, check out my channel. There's daily content popping up there. So you might just want to subscribe and turn on the notification bell to not miss anything in the future. Last but not least, in the description box down there, you'll find my Twitch channel where I do daily streams, my Discord server where there's a really nice and like-minded gaming community, and last but not least, also methods of direct support for this video project. Because, you know, I do my work for free and I will always do my work for free. And therefore, I can use any pair of helping hands that my, I might find. But be that as it may, watching this video means a lot to me, more than you might think. So thank you and I hope you enjoy that game soon as well. See you soon. Bye bye.